This video is part 2 of our keyword driven framework video. In our previous video we wrote a pretty complex method to help us grab data from an Excel file and potentially help us use it in a test. So in this video we will continue to use that information and see how we can use it in a test. So to test this now we will go ahead and actually write a test. So again let's just right click on this package the package under source test Java and we're going to create a new class and we're going to call this class zoo page heading test and what we're going to do in this class is let's just create a web driver first since we're going to need a driver at some point and let's go ahead and also create an instance of the Excel file handle class because we will need it at some point. The first thing we're going to do is write a quick before method. And we're just going to instantiate the driver. and we'll also instantiate the Excel file handler let's go ahead and import in the necessary libraries we're also going to write an after method in here all we're going to do is quit the driver again let's import that in and now we can start writing our test So again let's import in test as well. So in this test what we basically need to say is navigate to our test site, find an element to click on. In, it, in our case we need to click on these links. Once we've clicked on a link check the page heading and based on that give us some information. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we need to do is pass the file into our Excel file handler. So it's Excel file handler dot read from file. And the file name we're going to give is going to be the file name that we created. So in this case, it was called page heading dot XLS. And we will actually need to use this information. So we're just gonna create again a 2D array and import in the necessary libraries. So now that we've passed this information in, since the method returns a 2D array, a list of a list of strings with the data, this should now have our column data in it. In other words, we can now use this to look specifically through our data. We also need to capture a set of results somewhere as well. So again, let's create a string of arrays. So in this case, it's going to be a list of strings. And let's just call this results. And we're going to call this, uh, well, we're going to create a new array list. And again, importing the necessary libraries. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to push uh, a new string to our array just to compensate for the heading. And we'll just call this uh, results. Okay. Now, what we actually need to do is effectively loop through this data we've captured and then grab the data and 
also use it in our test. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a basic for loop. So I'm just going to say int i is equal to 1. Uh, the reason I say 1 is because if you have a look, 0 would give us this link here, i.e. this cell here. And links, this is just a heading we're using for reference on the Excel file on our end. This doesn't actually translate to anything on the page as such. The first link we actually need to look at is called the home link. Hence why we're starting from a position of index 1 as opposed to 0. So if we say i is less than data dot size, then i plus plus. This will now give us the row we're looking at. So now we need to do another for loop to help us look through each row, or rather each cell in our row. So again, this time I'm going to do int j. I'm going to say j is equal to 0. And let's just say if j is less than data dot get the position of i dot size. So this will now tell us the size of the row we're currently on. We can then increment j as well. So now, assuming you know how 2D arrays work, we now have the ability to look through each cell in this data table effectively. So let's do that. So the first thing we said we'd do is navigate to our links, so driver dot navigate dot to and in this case it's gonna be our test site, so it's HTTP so this will navigate to the test app. The next thing we said we'd do is find that information so if we go back and let's just look at the source for home so the so home link has an attribute of type ID with the value of home underscore link. If we have a look at adoption, it's got the same thing, adoption underscore link. The same thing for the about and contact. So if you look, home, about, adoption and contact are similar to the way they are referenced on the web page. So the thing we can do is we can take in this value, convert it into a lower string set of characters, and then append underscore link to it, and then use that to find and click on each of these links. So let's do that. So we're going to say driver find element by ID and in here we're going to say data dot get dot get j and now this is going to give us a very specific cell uh, dot to lowercase plus link dot click so what this now does is ignoring this part for the moment what this is doing is this is going to find an element and click on it now if we look at this it's going to find an element by searching for it by ID and the ID we're getting is effectively these links here. So once it gets, in this case, get i and then get j. So i we know at the very beginning is equal to 1 and j is equal to 0. So if you were to look at this table from a, an array perspective, if i is 1, i.e. that's 0, that's 1, and then j is equal to 0, in this case it's the same one here, it's going to take this value here, i.e. home, convert that to a lowercase and then append underscore link to it i.e. changing that to home underscore link in other words it's going to look like this and then it's going to try and click on it now the next thing we want to do is we said that when we're on a page we want to check the heading and the headings we've stored in our excel file here so we're going to do the same thing we're going to say if driver dot get title dot contains and we're going to say data dot get the i value and then we're going to say get 
uh, J. So here we're saying if the title on whatever page we're on contains the value of this index position. So if we have a look, this now says get I and then get J. In other words, it's looking at here again. What we want to do is actually look on the second column. And to do that, we can quite simply just increment J with a pre-increment cursor. So this will now become effectively plus one. In other words, it's going to look at the next cell in the row. We can now do some information with it. So let's just say we can add some results. So in this case, let's just add a value of pass to our result list of strings. Uh, also, to clean this up, let's just add an else as well, in that we will add in uh, a fail on the off chance it doesn't find what we're looking for. Finally, something we want to do is just uh, jump out of this loop because if you have a look, we're also going to pick up this information here, i.e. this pending information. But we don't want to actually process this pending information as a part of running through our test. So to do that, I'm just going to increment j at the end. Uh, clearly I've done that in the wrong place, it should be here. And what this will do is, because this will increment j by another value, when it goes back to the top of the for loop, it will break the for loop. Because we would have done everything we would have needed to have done in this one iteration. So we've really talked a, a lot about how to set up a method that basically takes in a file uh, and does a lot of magic to it and then effectively spits it out in, in our test and then we can use the information we have to automate something. So let's just go ahead and run this test. Uh, with a little bit of luck this will work first time because we've done a lot of things uh, so there's always a chance we might not work because we didn't actually check along the way. So let's see what happens. Okay, um, I'm actually quite surprised that it's worked first time. I was expecting to have done a typo somewhere or missed something. Uh, I guess I got a bit lucky. So fantastic, it looks like it's worked. Uh, but I guess the ultimate result would be let's actually print out some of this information to see it, has it actually worked. So the thing we'll print out is let's just print out a system printout here. And here we're just going to print out this value here. to see what information is actually obtained from the Excel file, in particular for the headings column. And we'll also print out all the results that are generated in our results table. So again, quite simply, just do a quick, quick loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to print out each column data as we're adding in the results and we are also going to print out the results itself. So let's save that and run that again. Uh, oops, uh, looks like I've made a logical error. Uh, clearly, because we increment J here and increment it here again, it'll print out uh, the third column. Uh, so let's just run that one more time. OK, 
Okay, so if we have a look at our links, it's printed out all four links, and then it printed out the results. So we added in results initially anyway, but it printed out all four results as well. So it's looked like it's actually found all of our links and passed. Just to make sure, let's go ahead and be a bit disruptive and change this to something else. So let's just do that. So about, this should now fail. Uh, let's do the same thing for the zero option as well. Call this uh, zoo. So now if you save that, I is now updated this here. If we now run this, what we're expecting is the second and final result to pass but the first and the second one to fail because these links have now changed and that's not how it appears on the web page so again let's run this one final time just to confirm that fantastic so naturally it's only printed out two links because this condition here was only satisfied twice uh, but if we have a look at the results, the results reflect what happened here. So in this video, this goes into a lot of detail into how to get information from an Excel file and use that information in a test and then how to generate some set of results from it. So in this video, I think we've learned a lot about how to create a keyword driven framework and use that information to run a test. Now, I can see that I haven't actually covered uh, writing results back to uh, this Excel file. So in this video we've covered all the techniques we need to know in order to read data and use it in a test. In the next video we will look at how to update the results inside the Excel file to reflect what we've printed out here therefore making this framework a little bit more robust and clever in what it does. And that's it for this video folks, thanks for watching. Hi guys, I really appreciate you watching my videos. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you already haven't, hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with my latest videos which I release every Wednesdays and Sundays. Also follow me on Twitter, Facebook and Google, links in the description below. Until next time, ciao.